I'm Valerie Beal and I'm at the Cool Tool Studios and I'm going to show you how to embellish a piece using flex clay and an extruder. I'm going to use scratch foam in a way that it's not usually used. I have to say I love scratch foam. I love to work on it. I love to draw on it. It's just an inexpensive, wonderful way to create um, textures and patterns and all kinds of things. In fact, I even cut it out and use it as a template for unusual shapes because it's very easy to draw around. Um, I've started with a sketch and I did it, I did half of it the way I wanted it. And to make it symmetrical, I folded the tissue paper in half drew the other side so now I have a nice symmetrical design that I want to put onto the scratch foam. I've laid it on the scratch foam, I've gone over everything with a pencil and I have a very pale image on it. It doesn't matter because I'm going to use the extruder to extrude things that will lay on top of the scratch foam where the lines are. So I'm going to move this aside. I've finished a piece um, to the point where it's dry. This is flex clay and flex clay is especially good for use with the extruder. Um, one of the things that's nice, and I'll extrude fresh pieces this time, but you can extrude a piece of clay like this and this is about a week old. It's been drying for a week. I can bend it this way, I can bend it that way, I can do whatever I want with it. I also can roll it at two cards thick, bend it all over the place, and I can cut it with scissors. That's how soft it is. So there's a lot you can do that is specific to the flex clay, and it is very nice to use with the extruder. This is the extruder. Well, it's kind of like an old-fashioned cookie press. Um, you turn the knob to pull the, the barrel back. So you want to pull it back, and then you want to load your clay in. I'll load a little bit. I'm not going to need a huge amount of clay for this, but if I need more, I can always add it. I'm going to put my clay in. And then we have a cap, and we have various dies that can go on it. And I am going to choose three dies, four actually, and I will use all of them at one point or another. This is to extrude a tiny line. It's a tiny little hole in here. It always extrudes bigger than the hole, though. I'm going to use a half circle one. And let's see, is that bigger? Yes, that's a little bit bigger. So I'll be using all of those. The first thing I'm going to do is to extrude a half circle and I want a small half circle, not a big one. So I lay in my half circle die into the cap, and then I lay the circle die on top of it. And that will cut this in half, and it'll give me domed on one side, flat on the other. And I'm gonna screw that on, and I'm going to begin twisting this. Once you feel it bite, you twist out the amount that you want. I'd say this is going to be, well, I'll do a little more. You should keep continuously twisting because if you don't, you sometimes get bumps in it. So you see that it's curved on one side and it's flat on the other. 
you could take this and lay it flat and leave it until it's a little bit dry and then just kind of roll it around and it is good to go. I keep it in a little jar. Um, it's a little bit easier to work with when it's fresh. So we'll use the fresh one because it's flex clay. You see it's not sticking to me. And I'm going to start on this side. And I'm going to spray a little bit of water here. And I'm just leaving it in there for now. I'm going to wet this whole section. And actually, while I do this, I'll put it on a tough card. It'll make it easier for me to lift it up when I want to. So I'm wetting this. And I'm going to take it and I like to start sort of in the middle of the area that I'm going the bend, not at the end. I'm just going to push it in here. Wet that. Be keeping the flat part on the bottom. So there we have this. And I will take my knife, just pressing it in, and kind of follow this curve down. I'll cut it off with a little extra because we want this to sort of cross over itself. Okay. Again, I am going to wet this part. And I'm going to lay this in. Sort of just push it up in there. Cut it here. And of course, when all of this shrinks, it's going to look very nice. Now, I want to take this where they cross each other and cut right down the center. Take this off, take this away. And it needs a little fussing, not much. There. And I will wet this and push these two together. And now I've outlined the outside. And I might want to put a little more water there. and press it in a little bit harder. Okay, these are too short to bother to keep, so I will put this in with my clay. For around the top, I want a thicker band. And if these start to come apart, I can keep working them and adding something to that line to clean it up. So in order to take this, the end cap off, I pull it back a little bit to take the pressure off. I can then take the end cap off. I can take out the two dies and I'm going to add this half circle and then the slightly larger circle. You certainly could put in the circle before the half circle. It does not make the slightest bit of difference. Screw this back on. And again, extrude. 
And that kind of ought to be a little more. Good. That's enough. So it's going to have a thicker top than the uh, bottom part. So now I'm going to wet this whole thing. Again. And because I have cut this one in line with this curve, this one will just lay into that. And we're going to push this one around and in. Again, add water. Press it in. You have to kind of keep pressing it in so that all the gaps are glued. And we will put paste on the back to uh, finish it. Now I'm going to cut this along the line of this curve and this along the line of that curve. And again, these are going to be put away. So now I've outlined this whole piece. And now I'm going to use the tiny hole without the half circle because it's so small that if you cut that in half, it's not, it's not really viable. You really need a thicker piece of clay than that. But again, open it up, unscrew it. Take the pieces out, and let's see how much we actually have left. I could add a little more clay to that because that's not a huge amount. Um, this little tiny die doesn't take an enormous amount, but it, we don't want to run out in the middle of things. So I'm opening this up a little bit more, putting in the clay. Putting the little die in, and screwing it on. Because of the way flex clay dries, the outside dries and the inside stays kind of moist indefinitely, um, the tiny, skinny little snake that I'll extrude, you can't keep because the whole outside of it dries and there's nothing much inside so it will become brittle but it does allow me to extrude a line about this long i'll break this off and i'll place it where it needs to go and then if when if i need more i'll extrude more okay the first line i see is right along there. And you can hardly see it, but it doesn't matter. It's, this is not, this is using scratch foam kind of as um, follow the line kind of thing. Okay, I'm putting this on. I'm going to pick this up. It's much easier to get precision with this than with syringe. Okay, now I am going to wet this and kind of smooth this as much as I can. And I want to cut, and I can refine some more at this point, but I want to cut this off so it's not just hanging on there. A little more water here. I'm 
There, that's starting to look like a fairly decent curve. And this is really enough for it to adhere. And I'm kind of smoothing the ends of this down a tiny bit. It doesn't have to be too much. Okay, there we go. Now we have a bunch more little curves here. We have one in the center, which I will do first. And the easiest way to do this is, again, start at the center and then bring it down. And I think I'm going to tap this in place up here with the brush. Just sort of hold it in place and move it down. Move it over a little bit and cut it. You'll notice that I'm not starting at the end of anything. I'm starting in the middle. It seems to work much better that way. And you see how it's distorted? I can just push it right back where I want it to go. There. And I'll put some more water here for the other side. And now I can just lay this in. And cut it. And there we'll go. Okay. Okay. That looks really good. Maybe it should be moved a little bit this direction so that this area and this area are the same size. Good. These are still fine, soft enough so I can do some of these. I don't know if I can do all of these little lines. We have three little lines here. And we'll start with, and I'll just break a piece off. It's easier to work with a small piece than it is a big piece. And I can see that if I cut it about there and push it, oops, oh, this I can fix. Okay. There we have the first one in. And this one can be a little bit smaller. And you can just pinch it off with your finger. Now it works great. All right, I need to cut it there. I'll take it out. Cut it. If I get it wet enough, I can get the proper curve into it. There. And although I had three lines on the original drawing, I think that it's going to be tight to put three in here. So I'm going to leave it at two. Now this is just kind of smoothing the these up okay now I'm going to roll out some clay and I'm going to cut it with 
a little square cutter and I'm going to take all of this clay and put it back. And even as this is a little crumbly, if I just missed it, wrap it and put it away, it'll be fine. And I have to take what's left out of the extruder, again, back it up a little bit to release the pressure. Open this up, I'm through using the extruder. Um, you might want to clean your extruder at this point. I tend to not keep this. The extruder is aluminum. It is anodized so that there's a barrier between the metal clay and the aluminum. But because I've cleaned this um, inside of this cap so many times, I've scratched through the barrier. So I don't really want to keep that. And it's only a tiny bit. This part is fine. I just push it out. Pull it off the top. And it's perfectly good. Now, had I wanted to, I could very well have done any kind of texture in any of these sections for my um, on my scratch foam. I didn't in this one because it's not a really huge piece. But um, the next thing I will do is I'll roll some clay. Oh, maybe three cards thick, two or three cards thick. It's not really important. And I will cut them out with this wonderful little square cutter. Uh, they come in sets. And do I have a set here? Uh, I suppose not. But this is the round set. The cutters come in these sets. And they are so useful. The square has all different size squares, one inside the other. Um, I love them. So I'm going to get it. A texture plate that is three cards thick and I'm going to roll out a little bit. And I rolled it this way. I'm going to need, I've marked it on here, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three. You'll notice I'm pulling up before I'm fully down to the bottom. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Otherwise, the clay ends up getting stuck in there, and you can get it out, but it's so much easier to do it this way. So I'm peeling this off and taking the pieces off as I go. Okay, and I'm going to use my paste. And there's usually a good side and a bad side when you use one of those. The good side is the, the top, and the bad side is what was underneath. And you want the bad side underneath. So I'm going to turn some of these that look a little raggy over. And that'll just sort of disappear into the work. You won't even see it. OK. I take some paste. I touch it to the little square. I then place it where I want it. And there it is. Now, again, I can move this with water. I do want to put some water on that to really place it firmly. A little paste, pick it up, and I had pre-marked this, so I kind of know where these go. And this last one, 
I need a piece here and a little piece there. So I am going to cut this on the diagonal. And if we're lucky, it'll just fit. Now, this one would have to go this way. And yes, it just fits. And this one will have to go this way. No? This way, yeah. And it just fits. And this I'll put a little paste around. The last thing I want to do is to and put some circles in there. All right. So we're going to take the first circle. And I'm going to put that in before I do anything else. Because I want to see if how well it fits. And that will go right about there. Yeah, that's good. I can probably put another one the same size above it. Up. Well, there are two ways to get this out. You can use this, or you can blow on it like it's a straw. Sometimes that works too, but I'm going to use that. bit of slip and this one goes down and okay we can put another one above it and I think I'll leave it at that now, I will dry this, I'll turn it over, and I will add a lot of slip to the cracks in the back. And um, I probably will put some holes in here and here so that I can hang little dangles from it. And then I have to make a bale for this. Cut this off. It'd be kind of cool to make a square bell. rolling this around and I'll refine this later need to dry it first I need to dry this now I'll put it on the mug warmer and let her dry and the same with the bale let them both dry here's the piece fired partially tumbled and it will be tumbled a little bit more to bring up a little more shine. Gold plating will be added to parts of it, and a black patina will be added to the rest. And stones will be hung from the loops at the little tips, and then it'll be ready to wear. Here's the piece, all finished and ready to wear. The gold plating is on it, the black patina is on it, the stones are hung on it, and it's very dramatic. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.